Here is a population of meerkats. What will happen to this population over time? Will its size increase, decrease, stay the same? These are questions that we'll be able to answer once we explore population dynamics. Let's start by thinking about how to calculate a population's growth rate. Growth rate depends on a few factors. Birth rate, or fertility rate, which will increase the population, death rate, or mortality rate, which will decrease the population, and then migration rates, individuals moving in and out. And if we assume that there are no individuals moving in and out, we can have a very simple equation for growth rate. Growth rate equals the birth rate minus the death rate. And in a population where there are more births or individuals moving in than there are deaths or individuals moving out, the population is going to increase. If we have a population where there are more deaths or people moving out compared to births and individuals moving in, then the population will decrease. So what determines the birth rate and the death rate? Well, this balancing act comes down to limiting factors. Limiting factors include things like pathogens, predators, uh, sunlight, water availability, even weather, because all of these things can prevent a population from growing larger. And ultimately, they will determine whether the birth rate and death rate are increasing or decreasing. Now we can divide limiting factors into two different types. Some limiting factors are density dependent. If we look at this graph, our independent variable is the density of the population, how crowded it is. So here, this is an uncrowded population. This is a crowded population. Our dependent variable on the y-axis is the intensity of the limiting factor. In other words, how strongly is it affecting the population? Well, density dependent factors depend on the density. If the population is uncrowded, the factor doesn't have much of an effect. But if the population is super crowded, then the factor is going to have a major impact. In contrast, uh, density independent factors are just that. They operate the same no matter what the density of the population. So if it's uncrowded, if it's crowded, it doesn't matter, it has the same impact. Let's take a look at some examples. These are density dependent. Uh, predation, more predation, uh, competition for resources. All of these things uh, have a more dramatic impact when the population gets more crowded. And that makes a lot of sense when you think about competition. If you don't have a lot of individuals in your population, there's not gonna be a lot of competition. If you're really crowded, there's gonna be more competition. Density independent limiting factors tend to be abiotic and include things like fires, floods, volcanic eruptions, um, earthquakes, and other natural disasters. All of these events will have the same impact whether the population is crowded or not. So now let's take a look at how we can model population growth. The first model we're going to look at is the exponential model, and this shows growth in ideal circumstances, but it rarely ever happens in the real world. So with exponential growth, there is just a continual increase in population size, and this can only happen if the birth rate greatly exceeds the death rate. And that can only happen if resources are unlimited and there are no limiting factors. So plenty of food and water to go around, not a lot of predators, no disease. Everything is wonderful. In reality, though, that's not how the world works. And so we have the logistic model that shows us realistic growth. Here's the logistic model. As you can see, the population is showing some different patterns over time. Initially, it's increasing slowly. This is what we call the lag phase. Then it starts to increase really quickly. This is the log or exponential phase. But eventually the growth starts to level out and it stops. And we have a stationary phase. The growth rate here is zero. This is because the population has reached its carrying capacity, the maximum size that that particular environment can support. Why does the population eventually stop growing? Well, because there are limiting factors, reducing the population growth. And at this point, birth rate and death rate 
are equal, and that's why our growth rate overall is zero. Note that even this is still a model, and many populations don't fit this exact model. In fact, sometimes populations can temporarily exceed their carrying capacity, and then they're brought back down by the presence of limiting factors. Let's take a look at reproductive strategies, because they can affect growth rate. These insects have a different reproductive strategy uh, than the elephants I'm about to show you. So the elephants do what is known as case selection. Each time they reproduce, they only have a few offspring, and they give those offspring a lot of care, and it takes a while for the offspring to mature. And you're going to see logistic growth more frequently with this type of organism. In contrast, insects and other organisms uh, favor our selection. In this scenario, they have many, many offspring, millions of eggs. They don't give the offspring much care, and it doesn't take the offspring very long to mature. Uh, and in this case, you're likely to see exponential growth, at least initially. We can also predict growth rate by looking at the age structure of populations. Uh, and here's an age structure diagram. So what this is showing is the number of people in particular age groups. So in this population, we have a lot of people who are in their pre-reproductive years, 0 to 14. And here we have men, here we have women. We also have a fair amount of people of reproductive age, uh, 15 to 44 years. And then not so many older people. So depending on the shape of the age structure diagram, we can predict what will happen. In this case, we're going to have a population increase because most of the population is capable or will soon be capable of having babies. In contrast, we're going to have a decreasing population here because many of the people in the population are now too old to have babies. And then in this particular situation, uh, because there's a balance between old and young, the population may remain stable. And that concludes our exploration of population dynamics.